There's a lot more to Goldray than just the powerhouse and the dam. To the east of the powerhouse, there were a number of activity areas associated with electricity production. On the bank just behind it, there's a small storage shed built around 1940 that's still there today. It's about 10 feet wide by 15 feet deep, has a wood frame and corrugated metal sides and roof. To the east of the little shed, there was a switch yard built around the same time as the powerhouse. In this photo, you can see the poles and transformer canisters that served as starting points for transmission lines that carried power to municipal substations and industrial customers all over the Rogue Valley. The switchyard was dismantled in 1972 when the power plant was decommissioned, and all that remains today is the concrete foundation measuring 6 feet wide by 40 feet long and some large chunks of concrete rubble. From 1910 to about 1962, there was a transformer building at the east end of the switchyard. The transformer building was a two-story structure with a gabled roof. It was 32 feet wide and 35 feet long. The concrete foundation remains intact today, and there are a number of surviving wooden beams along its southern border. The orange netting you see in the background here was used to protect this area of archaeological interest during the demolition of the powerhouse and dam. Photographs from different periods have shown buildings and structures related to power generation facilities at various locations in the vicinity of the powerhouse. Just north of where the transformer building was, there's a cluster of slabs, piers, and footings of unknown purpose. This foundation is two feet tall, three feet wide, and eight feet long. We don't know what it was for. Down here is a concrete footing with an inset for a six by six inch post. And over here, we see the base of a one foot diameter wooden pole mounted in concrete that was poured directly into the bedrock outcrop. At the top of this cluster, there's a concrete slab measuring six feet wide by 23 feet long. To the west of the powerhouse on the hill above the main road, it was once a small house with a gabled roof and an open porch facing the river. This was probably where the site manager lived in the early 1900s. The house was built on a terrace with retaining walls on the south and west sides and a granite outcrop forming the eastern boundary. The retaining walls and house pad are still there today. The house pad measures 33 by 33 feet for a total of about 1,100 square feet. At the base of this retaining wall, we see a one-inch pipe protruding from the ground that may have been used to supply water to the house or probably was part of an irrigation system. Above the house pad running east is a road supported by a three-foot tall, one-foot wide, and 120-foot long retaining wall made of dry stacked granite. Water was delivered to the various buildings and facilities throughout the complex by four-inch pipes that probably used to be underground, but many, like this one, are now exposed. In this 1929 photo, you can see several lamp posts. Electricity was plentiful, and there were street lamps throughout the complex lighting up the hillside. Many of these lamp posts are still standing. This lamp post has been standing here for over a hundred years just as it is today. Here's another example of an underground pipe that's been exposed by erosion over the last hundred years, though this one is still partially buried. By 1941, the house looks rather dilapidated, but you can now see a 15 by 20 foot storage shed or perhaps a garage that was built just down the hill from it sometime in the 1930s. Though the house is long gone, the shed is still standing today. It has a wood frame and corrugated metal roof and siding. It's kind of amazing that this little storage shed that was probably intended to be temporary is still standing after 70 plus years. Below the shed, there are three iron eye-bolt cable anchors set into a bedrock outcrop. 
we don't really know what purpose these anchors served. In this same photo, just above the house, we see a couple of outbuildings. These structures may have been used as root cellars or some other sort of storage. There's an 18-foot wide cut here just below the road containing a collapsed pile of burned lumber. There are some 8x8 and 4x4 wooden beams here, and some of them have brackets attached with 5-inch nails. Just above this pile of lumber, we find another segment of 4-inch pipe that was used to supply water. Well, the powerhouse was definitely the functional centerpiece of the Gold Ray complex. In the early 1900s, the clubhouse that Dr. Ray built up on the hill was the social centerpiece. This was an elaborate two-story building with a hipped roof and wraparound porches on both levels. Unfortunately, there are no photos of the inside of this grand edifice, but judging from the exterior, it must have been magnificent. All that remains of it today are a series of terraced retaining walls, but it's not difficult to envision where the clubhouse itself once stood and the grand parties and social activities that must have taken place there. These wooden stairs were apparently added later, as they aren't shown in any of the clubhouse photos. This lower staircase leads up to a terrace just below the clubhouse, where there's an octagonal structure that apparently used to be a fountain. The fountain is encircled by three thick metal cables, and there are two beams protruding out the front. The staircase consists of seven steps, now largely overgrown with vegetation, and some of the wood has decayed, and the top couple of steps are starting to collapse. Here we are, up on the lower terrace, where you can get a close-up view of the fountain. Each of these eight sides measures eight and a half feet long and is two feet tall and 14 inches thick. The upper staircase consists of four steps and leads to the terrace where the clubhouse was. Here you can see the dry stacked granite retaining wall. No mortar was used to hold these stones in place, but the wall is still intact over a hundred years later and we can still admire the fine coarse stonework. In this photo, we see the view from the terrace next to the clubhouse. And here's what it looks like today from the road above. There's the fountain down below, the lower staircase, the upper staircase. And here we are, coming down the upper staircase to the fountain level again. You can see that thick cable running around the outer edge of the fountain, probably intended to reinforce it when it was full of water. And here's the lower staircase from above. There's a really nice view of the valley from here. It's quite beautiful and practically glows in the golden rays of the afternoon sun. To the east of the clubhouse and just off the road above it is a large semicircular terrace about 70 feet in diameter. It's supported by a seven foot high cut granite boulder retaining wall. From the top of this terrace, we can see that there are metal pipes set at 10-foot intervals around the top of the retaining wall. At the western corner, we can see the brick retaining wall that supports the road from this point on. And here we have another lamppost that's been standing here for over a hundred years. We don't know the purpose for which this circular terrace was originally intended though it may have been a place for visitors to the clubhouse to park their carriages, or later, their automobiles. Whatever its purpose, it certainly afforded a wonderful view of the Gold Ray Dam. In 1935, the clubhouse was torn down and replaced with two houses. These were gable-roofed bungalows with daylight basements and porches facing the river. Just up the hill is a wooden chicken coop that's visible in this 1941 photo. During that period, there was also what appears to be a garage situated at the back of the circular terrace. This is the road leading from the circular terrace to the houses. As we saw before, the retaining wall for this portion of the road is made of dry stacked brick. It's reinforced with mesh and is 53 inches in height. Here we're looking down from the road and can see the wooden staircases again, which were probably added during this same period. 
One of the houses was demolished in 1972 when the power plant was decommissioned, and the other in 2000. This is the house pad for the second house, measuring 35 feet by 50 feet. There are three wooden steps in the northwest corner leading up from the house to what was probably a path to the chicken coop. And this is the chicken coop, which was built of wood sometime in the 1930s to supply the residents with fresh eggs and poultry. This chicken coop remains on the site today and is in remarkably good condition after 75 years, having long outlasted the houses it was built to serve. Inside, there are three nesting boxes made of wooden crates and a hanging roost for the chickens. Interestingly, the walls were insulated with flattened cardboard boxes. Sitting high up on the hill above the clubhouse was the water tower. When it was first built in 1904, it was ensconced in its own little building with a gabled roof and columned front looking like a temple. By 1941, however, the fancy facade had all been done away with, exposing the round wooden stave structure with its conical roof that we see today. This water tower was an important feature of the Gold Ray complex, supplying the entire complex with water for domestic use. At the back of the circular terrace, there are two pipes protruding from the cut bank. One of these pipes brought water down from the water tower to provide a gravity-fed water supply to living areas. The other pipe was used to pump water up to the water tower from the river using that large centrifugal pump we saw in the powerhouse. Looking up from here, we see the water tower itself. And approaching the water tower from the west, we can see what's probably a continuation of the same pipe we saw below, leading to or from the water tower itself. Attached to the front of the water tower is a wooden ladder used for maintenance. And on the eastern side is a curiously modern two-inch PVC pipe that was obviously installed later, but we don't know when or why. In front of the water tower, there's a power pole. And here, we're peeking inside the water tower at the underside of its conical roof. These shiny ceramic objects on the side of the power pole are insulators. On the downhill slope, there's a dry stacked stone retaining wall, which may have been part of the foundation of the building that used to house the water tower or it may just support the terrace on which it stands. Down the hill from the water tower, off a bend in the road, there's a two-inch threaded pipe sticking up out of the ground secured with four bolts. Its purpose is unknown. But from here, we have a beautiful view of the valley, of the mountains, and of the system of sloughs formed by the backwater behind the Gold Ray Dam.